Hey, speaker cards, I have uh, speaker card, Mr. Jason Bajeron. Chamber of Commerce, uh, Parish Recreation <coughs> System, and try to limit your comments. We're going to go three-minute time. We'll extend you once, and we'll try to move this thing along. I'm sorry. Hang on one second. Jason okay. Bajeron, 120 Maple Avenue. I come up here as a chair of the Chamber of Commerce. I also stand here today as a product of TPR with kids who participate in TPR, coach of the West Side Braves and Blue Jays baseball programs. I grew up in Berg. Uh, two successful TPR teams, the Berg Mustangs and the Montague Raging Cajuns, were part of the teams that formed the 1991 state championship football team that touched many lives. I was a resident of Rec 23. I am a resident of Rec 11. I have had an internal look at the system from many angles. I want to commend the council on the changes related to the 2-3 board. I also want to commend the volunteers that have spent countless hours to bring the system where it is today, working with what they have. I've seen it firsthand on a weekly basis also. Unfortunately, recreation reform needed doesn't stop at a recreation board change. We are still dealing with inefficiencies and recently has brought to light again about somebody related to recreation not being fiscally responsible with our tax dollars. We approached the council last year at this time to lay out our 12-point executive summary that we as a chamber with almost 700 member companies of which pay great amount of ad valorem taxes felt was important. And I have a presentation if you could put up in a second here, or a screenshot, I'm sorry. Uh, we are all parents in this system. We still stand here today for improvement in a system that needs improving. We're not trying to lay blame. This isn't something one person can fix. It takes a collective group of people and a lot of effort. We are here to help. What the chamber did is we came up, we feel like as a chamber that we need to have a system-wide master plan. And I think it's interesting that we've come speak tonight because we have heard a lot about recreation just tonight that really solidifies our stance on coming up with a system-wide master plan. And I have five points that we have come up with that determines why we feel that we need a system-wide master plan. Number one, we have a dysfunctional unfinished system which has created imbalances with facilities and tax rates. In some areas, like mentioned tonight, too many facilities and not enough money to go around. The Bayou community recreational needs differ from more densely populated areas. The Bayou Country Sports Park, which I'm, a couple people have had uh, trouble saying tonight, and an airbase park, if funded, need a different organizational structure with dedicated local funding. TPR needs to be restructured to service the modern needs of citizens of all ages and areas. And lastly, number five, we need a better organization and tighter fiscal oversight are needed so that the public trust is no longer violated. Again, as a chamber, we've been working on this with everybody. We want to help. We want to ensure that our recreation system with the revenue that's come into the system over the last 10 years uh, that we feel we all should be able to do better for our, our children. And, you know, I'm, I miss baseball practice tonight to be here. Hang on one second. Motion extend, Mr. Dirk Gidry. Second, Mr. John Navy. Okay, continue. And I'm in, I'm in my gear. I was supposed to have baseball practice tonight. So I'm here. <laughs> um, I'm part of the system or from the system. Um, you know, we just feel it's time to put a master plan that has people, that's something that people can go off of when it comes to how you lay out these parks and communities, how you administer them, how you maintain them, what you follow when you're appointed to the board, everything that would cover uh, and, and, hopefully clear up any miscommunication, misinformation, or anything that is causing problems within our current recreation system. That's all. Thank you. Um, okay. See no lights. Look, I, I'm going to address a couple of things. Um, for one thing, I see, you know, your number one item is a, we have a dysfunctional, inefficient system, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, we do have some areas that we need to work on, uh, some districts that have some issues, but to, to make a blanket statement that we have a dysfunctional, inefficient system which has created imbalances with facilities and tax rates is totally misleading in my opinion. Um, you know, and, and that's just my stance on that. And your second item, I, I totally agree. The Bayou community recreational needs differ from a more density from the urban you know, inner city area. There's no doubt about that. That's not just in Terrebonne Parish. That's, just, that's in nationwide. 
the Bayou Country Sports Park and the Air Base Park. Uh, needs a different organizational structure with dedicated local funding, I'm in total support of that. I do not think that those complexes should be managed by a, a rec board when they're not structured to do that. That's my opinion. Now, I can't speak for the rest of the council, but I can promise you that's my opinion. And that's a stance I'll take on it throughout this process. TPR needs to be restructured to service modern needs of citizens of all ages and areas. I totally agree with you on that. I, uh, I, I think our TPR needs to be restructured. You know, we, you know, in the, when I was in TPR, and like I've said several times before, I'm the oldest guy sitting up on this board. When I went to the gym, there were lines of people waiting outside to kids waiting to get into the gym. It ain't that way today. We got to think out the box. We got to figure out what it's going to take to get our kids off the streets and into these organized, structured activities. You know, and and I've I've mentioned to my rec boards. I've mentioned up here. You know, that the, the today's society is more electronics. I mean, I see three people on their phones right now while we're talking. You know, one of them being an administrator. So. You know, our kids are even more so in, in, in inclined to be on these electronic devices. So my suggestion is to get some of these things, you know, try to utilize that in, in our recreation programs. If that's what it's going to take to get them in there, let's, let's do what we got at hand. Uh, that's, that's what we're dealing with. So we got to think out the box. We got to get these kids off the streets and put them in some uh, structured activity, supervised structured activity. And better organization, fiscal, tighter fiscal oversights are needed. I think we proved to the people that we're, we're heading in that direction. You know, we've, we've got ordinances out there that we passed and voted on that put sus suspected or potential problem districts in total oversight by administration and council. So, I mean, I don't think we're way far off on, on this list. Like I said, I just, you know, the big thing I had a problem with is this blanket statement that we have a dysfunctional and inefficient system. And we do have some parts of our system that are dysfunctional and inefficient. But I don't, I don't want to label as the whole system as dysfunctional and inefficient. Now, I guess since I talked, I got to see a bunch of lights. So we're going to go with Mr. Darren Guidry. Yeah, well, first of all, I agree with the five points. And, you know, uh, each recreation district may be different, but in the recreation district that's in my district, I see the dysfunctional, inefficient systems and the inequality of taxes. I do think some of the other items are better, oversight's better, some of the other stuff has gotten better, but the dysfunction, when I go to Elisa Park Gym and Rec 2-3 is paying for all the maintenance, the school use, is using it every day. The rec can't use it. Then in the afternoon, TPR comes, but the person who's running the rec district really doesn't work for 2-3. They work for TPR, and it's like, who are they answering to? And then sometimes the general public comes to play as long as TPR is not scheduled, but they don't know when that's scheduled. It, it, there is some dysfunctionality, trust me. And, and you know, I've seen it in, 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 in my district at least. Some of the other districts may that maybe don't have interact as much with a lot of the, the TPR teams. They all seem to want to play in Recreation District 2-3. So, you know, uh, yeah, the, the different entities, and I know Mr. Dove is working on that. Uh, I, know he, I, I know he is planning to make that better, and he's committed to making that better. As far as the tax rates, I, I know you're specifically speaking of, of my district because on one side of the street's 15, one side's 5, and they both are using the same parks, you know. It, it, however, you know, the, the the district that has 15 just voted to renew it. So I don't know if the general public necessarily gets it or, or cares, or it, that's a big issue to the general public as far as the disparity of taxes. You know, uh, I, I was shocked just like everybody else, you know, and, and I think even the rec district was shocked because they didn't know if their tax would be renewed, but it was. Um, what I would like to see as a council person from the Chamber of Commerce is if the chamber, you know, thinks the, you know, a path, pathway is different than the pathways that we're going, you know, I would like to see a recommendation from businesses of what exactly 
the chamber is recommending be done to fix uh, recreation. You, you know, specifics as far as solutions, because I think we all agree, at least I agree to all these items as far as being problems. And I think a couple of them, we've made some solutions to get better. Mr. Dove is working with TPR and everything to try to make some of that things better. But I, hey, I'm open to any solutions. I don't have all the solutions and it's a tough thing to fix. You know, we just fixed something in Recreation District 2-3 that's been in existence for 30 years. You know, and, uh, and it took me a year to fix that. So uh, it's, it's, I think fixing recreation is a marathon, not a sprint. But uh, I'm open to any suggestions that any organization, and that's including the business community, has in specifics and how, what we can do to make this better. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Guidry. Mr. Al Momon. I represent four and, uh, three of them from They're doing actually very well. No complaints. I go visit them. Everything's moving uh, good. Rec 11, I don't know if you've been to Mechanicville, Jim. It's busted up bad. That's why I backed John up from day one, stuck my neck out for fiscal oversight. Mr. Dove has a plan. We trying to do it. Uh, you know, they got a lot of stuff on Facebook, you know, uh, Hank Babby got a website or some kind of thing, reform. A lot of people are criticizing. The, a lot of these people that work at these rec boards volunteer their time. Like Alana said, $10 an hour. A meeting. I mean, a, a $10 a meeting or whatever. A lot of them are doing it for free. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a service they're doing for the people. And, and the good ones are getting beat up for the couple bad eggs that they have. And we all trying to work as a team to straighten all this out. And, I, I, you know, I, I'm just tired of the good people getting beat up. I know last night I went to a rec meeting in Dulac and had a lady from Montague. She almost started crying because she's been working there like 30, 40 years and people are beating up on Facebook. And she told me that she don't like, you know, even like to look at Facebook anymore. But uh, I just want to say that I represent three bodies. And I want to tell all those people, thank you for the service they do for the kids at Terrebonne Parish. And then that's pretty much all I want to say. Thank you, Mr. Moralman. Mr. Navy. I just wanted to comment on your under five, five what, reasons for a statewide master plan. Okay. Uh, you know, you're right. Well, one thing, this is where it's crazy at when you start talking about tax rates. We actually built the juvenile detention center for $13 million that house 32 people with an air-conditioned gym. The kids that are in there actually get better recreated than our kids that are not in juvenile detention. $13 million, $7 million facility right next to it for the animal shelter to actually put animals to sleep. You know, we need to, as a government, be conscious about what we do, too, as far as the chamber, be conscious of all those other things that are going on out there, too, when these projects come about. That's $20 million that probably could have did some wonders in a lot of rec districts. $20 million. Now, you talk about the Bayou Sports Park and the Air Base Park. Where they, I just want to comment on the Air Base Park. The Air Base Park, and I don't even know if you're aware of this, but you know how that plan and, and, and that insight came about? Myself and Dirk Gidry. That's how. We actually came up with something saying we want to revitalize the Air Base, and that's when we started talking about dog parks, blast parks, and all kind of stuff. But not to make it political, we gave it to a rec board member to try to run with it, trying to play chess so we could better sell it, and they did. We're not against it. We just think that, and we know that these things are going to take time and money. You, don't even have, you didn't even have the money to finish Rec 2-3, okay? My other concern is, and some of the things I agree with, we had fiscal oversight tighter, but we just, you know, we felt like we couldn't punish other rec districts that were doing what they needed to do. So we, we, we kind of minimized it a little bit. But my question is to the chamber, and to anyone out there that want to answer this question, the only way you're going to get to point A, and that means just complete oversight of the whole process, is consolidation. Now, I don't even know how you get around that part of it, consolidation, because number one, all the rec districts has to agree with consolidation, and if one don't, consolidation doesn't happen. My concern is if there's a plan of consolidation, I would like to know it here that if the chamber has a plan toward consolidation. I think that's the most difficult sale in the world, to be honest with you right now, because one of the things that I heard you say, you're a 91 product of TPR. Well, I'm a, like 79 product of heart. 
You remember Hart? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know if some of y'all may not remember Hart, but of Hart. And the thing about it was District 11 came about because of the neglect within the inner city. You know that. And that's mm -hmm. my district mainly. Those, board, those guys came up with let's create Rec 11. That's how that came about. At the time, they didn't realize that Rec 11 and the district that I serve incorporates a lot of other business districts. They, they didn't realize that. Rec 2-3, when it was created, they didn't have all the money they have now. You know what really boasts 2-3 up besides the residential? That MLK corridor. That was really did it. And that's why they have the money they have today. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of research and study too, but I just would like to know how they're going to get to that as far as consolidation. My biggest concern is, and I don't know whether these council members are aware of this or not, everything is growing to the west side of town, okay? Further north, round 311, everything like that. I hope people understand that, and I hope the general public understand this. If you continue to take the tax base from the east side and, de and deplete it like it is, you decrease the tax base of recreation. And I'm sometimes wondering if this by design. Businesses, residential development, we don't have hardly no development going on the east side. We can't hardly get businesses to come set up shop on the east side. A lot of them going off of 311 other places. That increase your tax base for recreation, but it decreases the areas that we serve, the bayous and all that, it decreases it. So if we keep doing this, you really gonna they they're really gonna hurt us. I would see, I would love to see the chamber, if we can't consolidate, try to promote more growth on the east side of town. So we can, because I'm telling you all, I don't think they're looking at the big picture. They would deplete it. So some things I agree with and some things I don't. But I just believe that the only way you're going to get to where you need to get to is consolidation. And I don't, I don't think where you're going to be able to sell it at. I've been hearing some partial consolidation theories. Uh, I hope that's not true. You know, for the simple fact that after I heard some things tonight, where one of the reasons why, like I said, that Rec 11 was created because of neglect, then once again, we're giving it in the hands of a board to say whether these areas are going to be served or not. And that's the problem I got. So I don't know how you get to it besides the fiscal oversight that I created. But I can tell you one thing, consolidation is going to be just a hard sell. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Navy, Mr. Planners Prather. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Jason, um, I appreciate all the efforts with the Chamber. And I know y'all just want to get things uh, moving and get things uh, fixed. And there are some problems. I, I truly believe um, dysfunction taxes. I agree with all five. But some districts have um, more needs than others. Like the Bayou areas, I, am, I mean, I wish I had what they had, and, and it's working for them. But as far as where I am, and of course, uh, I appreciate um, Darren Gidry talking about my Lisa Park, and it's in 2-3, and I've spoke about it, and I, I sound like a broken record, so I'm glad somebody else is bringing it up but, and got a chance to see it. They don't have anything, and they are using a gym, um, but the public can't. And it's, it's utilized you know, for the school, and then the school board, actually, I, I saw how much they, uh, it costs to, to clean it, and I'm like, but the public's not using it. It's being utilized, you know, yes, different right. ways. But um, hopefully in, in the uh, future, I can have a smile on my face and Mr. Dove will say, oh, we found some monies and we can purchase that property and get that, that park for the people of Lisa Park. And I don't have anything for my area of um, St. Paul, Henderson, Henderson, Carlos, Marcel Lane, Jennings Lane. Those kids over there have zero. They have the state highway to walk, the road to walk, to go wherever they want to go. And that's why they, you see kids walking all around there. I'd love to find property around there and do something for them, for the kids, because all they do is walk. They have nothing, 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 nothing. And that's the kids that go to Terrebonne, and that's the kids that go to my Legion Park and go to all these other schools. So there is some room for um, improvement um, I love the fact that y'all looking at a master plan. I don't know who I, I, I said this, and I don't want, uh, and I'm not going to say consolidation because it's it's a bad word. Nobody wants to hear that. However, about a consultant coming in that's not even from this parish that's that knows recreation can come in, look at everything, and tell us, boom, this is what you need to do to make it look like all those other communities out there, these rural communities that don't even have the tax base we have. 
because somebody's got to come in and tell us, you know, what we need to do. I think we're on a little bit of the right track. And, of course, that, that uh, fiscal oversight. And I commend Mr. Navy. I, I commend the things that we're trying to do. But we also <coughs> need to work with everybody within the community. Chamber's taking a stand. I think uh, people, I think that just the general public starting to speak up and say, we want something. And it is about our kids, but it's about our uh, young adults, and it's about our seniors, too. It's everybody that needs something. And look, I'm a product of Hark. I was on the Powder Puffs and the BBs, and very proud of that, because I, then I played on Vanderbilt's team, and we, five, we won five state championships. So evidently, Hark helped me out to be a great player, and I had some great coaches. And um, so it, it's, I appreciate you actually a coach and doing the things that you do because you care about the kids you know and i think the majority of people that are speaking up whether you're with the chamber or you with any other organization the rotary or whatever they just want something that's going to work and it's going to be fair around the whole parish like one park shouldn't look better than another park i think everybody deserve something nice but we do need to look at uh, structure. We knew, do need to look at um, the air base. I have the, the uh, east side as well. I'm all for bringing something at that air base. I used to go there as a kid. They had lots of things. And at one time, John, the east side was the booming side. Seriously. And now it's, it's shifting to the west side. We're trying to balance here. But um, I'll tell you, um, at one time I said, I'm so tired of hearing about recreation. But guess what? It needs to be fixed. That's why we're so tired of hearing about it, you know. And I appreciate the calls and people that are telling me and giving me ideas because that's what we need. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm not a genius on it. I don't know what the answer is. I don't have children to recreate, but I do believe that we do need to get some type of master plan to where we, we're going to make it work for all districts. So uh, with that, Jason, do y'all have some type of, um, besides all these these five, something that y'all kind of putting in that y'all can, can tell us or help or, I mean, a consultant? I mean, I don't know, just kind of asking. Um, so I'll, if, you, if you don't mind, I'll respond to that. A couple of things okay. thrown at me. Okay, so um, um, just kind of go back and cover it. So when we say dysfunctional system, I'll tell you I'm speaking from a lot of that personally. Uh, from situations where we don't have enough umpires, where we're playing on fields that people can get hurt, kids can get hurt on, where you find out there's a coaches meeting and then you find out you got practice the next day, which means you got to reach out and call all these kids, and then you got practice schedules that are actually games, not practices. And then at a TPR level with football, um, we're playing on probably one of the worst fields in the parish, and it's a mud bowl basically on a regular basis. So, you know. These things that we're talking about, I'm just giving you my personal experiences. What's happened through this process is the chamber's kind of become the hub. Anything that's going on or going wrong, it's coming to us. And I want to, I didn't get to say this earlier, I want to commend Gordon Duff on a lot of stuff that we've had. We're just, we, we, we don't want to be the investigative body. We, we're just getting, we get, I'm telling you, it's amazing. We get something every day that something's going on, this needs to be fixed, this needs to be addressed. So we've been working Gordon Dove on a lot of stuff that we really say, well, we, we just have this information. This is what we got. Here you go. You know, because that's who we've been kind of working through through this point. So um, we're, we're, we're welcome to share any of that information with anybody that would like to have it. Uh, but it is truly amazing the things that we get on a daily basis of, of for whatever reason, them not, not making it to where it needs to go. Um, with, you know, with, like I said, so with being that hub, uh, to address a couple of comments that you made, is uh, Mr. Navy is that, for example, with the chamber and east side, we have an east side business after hours. We get all the east side business together. We promote after hours on there at least once a year. We're trying to do everything, and that's been one of the things under my tutelage this year has been that we're trying to do everything we can to help businesses. I want the chamber to be a business leading organization that creates a mentor culture for businesses to grow, start, maintain, whatever they need. Any help they might need, any information we provide, they come to us, and that's what we're here for. When they talk about consolidation, uh, we don't say that C word anymore. We call it reorganization, and that's what's kind of led us. You know, when you look at whether you disagree or agree on these five points, again, we're coming. F we think it's time for a system-wide master plan. We know of people that will do that as consultants. We want to be involved in the process. 
we had 12 points that we brought out a year ago that when you look at really those 12 points, most of them were not addressed or the things went completely opposite direction of the stances that the chamber took on those 12 items. But we're moving past that. We said, let's make it simpler. Let's show what we think is priority. And we think a system-wide master plan is what's priority at this time. Well, I appreciate that. And um, any, I'd like to be a part if y'all discuss that. Please invite me because I'd like to get more educated on the plan and what we can do. And um, definitely, I think we're going in the right direction as far as talking about it and, and, and getting ideas. And um, we need to do something and do it soon. And I know it's not going to happen overnight. So while y'all coming here is a big step and in getting involved last year and also what I think all of us are what, what we're trying to do. So um, with that, I'm going to let everybody else talk. But uh, I would like to find out more because I know you do have more. Can I, can I clarify my ask or our ask? Our yes. ask is for the council and the parish government to come up with a system-wide master plan. Oh, okay. That's what we feel. Those are the those we feel those are the parties that can get it done, and and probably should get it done. And we're looking to assist at whatever level we can with everything that we've been made aware of and all the issues we see and the good things. And again, we're doing extended season at Do Large Field right at Do Large behind Do Large Middle, and I take I mean those guys all the time on a the job they're doing. I play for the Burt Mustangs. I mean, I, I'm from the Bayes. I know I've been down there, and now I live on, on the – well, I live downtown now. So um, being – living on the west side, living down the Bayes, living in town, every place I've been is always possibility for improvement. So our ask is that the council and the parish government look to adopt uh, moving forward with something that would be a master plan. So I guess that what you're asking, I guess this will be um, – I guess – uh, our chair and vice chair to come up with maybe, I mean, I know we have a recreation, um, don't they have a committee now that they're, they're huh? Advisory board, we have that, but maybe we need to make it a step up to maybe uh, do something, and I'm uh, willing to be a part of it um, if uh, the chair and vice chair want to um, develop something, but uh, I'm not an expert. So, of course, I would definitely have to get input from how it can be what it needs to be. So, I'm all game, so I'm definitely in. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Baritha. Thank you. Derek. Yeah, Derek. I appreciate y'all coming up here. First of all, uh, the Bayou Sports, the Bayou Country Sports Park, I'm not going to call it the paradise or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I really think that in the long run, it would be need to take an auto rec two or three and hire a manager just to run that. Because if you're going to run a facility of that magnitude and bring in tournaments from all over, people from all over the country, all over the area, you need to have somebody besides the recreation district that's doing it because it's, it would be a full time job. I've talked to him with TD, you know, before, and I voiced my opinion about that because I don't really think a recreation district can handle that job because it has to be like a civic center job or whatever, it has to be a full-time job to be able to make that park successful, you know? And we're gonna go back with the C word, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I've talked to government officials and I've talked to people from Lafourche Parish that a few years ago consolidated their recreation districts. And the only thing I got to tell you is the public and the government officials said it was a bad thing to do. They're not very happy with the way it works, you know? So. That's all I can say is, is about what's going on in Lafourche Parish. And I mean, I don't want to connect us with Lafourche Parish, you know. But what, I, what, I, what I've talked to, now this is people high up in government, and I've talked to people down there. They're not far consolidated. They, they, they voted for it when uh, Charlotte was a uh, parish president, but they wish they were out of it now because it's not working. The people from the low buys are getting the banana, you know what I mean? So, but I can tell you that you know, you say dysfunctional, you know, I, I, I represent Rec 11 and I represent Rec 7. You can't combine and put my Rec 7 against Rec 11 because the facilities I have down to buy it and the people that I have down to buy, it's a five member board. They are very dedicated workers, you know what I mean? And they do their job very well. We have no problems. I've never, let me tell you, six years that I've been a councilman and I've had one complaint. And you don't want me to tell you what the complaint is? It's not a recreation board employee, it's a TPR employee that's not a